What's up guys, Shane here from Fugadec 3D Printing and today I want to talk about 3D printing Lego. Now wait, 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 don't leave, don't leave. I, I know that's kind of like faux pas in the world of Lego, but I want to talk about 3D printing specific accessories for Lego. So let's talk about it. Hey guys, okay, so when I'm talking about accessories, what I'm specifically talking about are risers for a Lego train track. Now, I've been getting more into Lego since the holidays, and I have launched a Lego channel that I'm gonna be working on some content for, but first, I need to work on 3D printing a few things. Now, these risers are pretty simple, and I'm gonna show you one that I've already 3D printed with an FDM printer. So here's one that was printed on my Prusa Mark III S. Now, what this is for is to gradually rise the track up so that you can have it higher. And I'll show some pictures here so you can see what it looks like because I haven't made any of them yet. I'm working on it. I'm working on the models, things like that. So now you can do this, but it honestly gets pretty expensive if you have a large track that you want to rise or just in general, like trying to keep it stable. You have to have quite a lot of pieces to be able to do that. Or you need a special order parts off of BrickLink or something like that and to be able to make these custom risers, basically. So I wanted to see, is there anything I can do with 3D printing? And yes, you can. There's a few models on Thingiverse that I found. Uh, you couldn't really find them anywhere else, so it had to be Thingiverse, sorry. But yeah, so what these do are, these are the little pillars that go up on either side, and there's another part to 3D print, which I'll be doing here shortly in the video. Basically, these are what are gonna go underneath the track. Now, there's, there's an inherent problem with 3D printing Lego or Lego accessories or parts, things like that. Number one, it's super faux pas and the, the big community kind of frowns upon it because if you're gonna do Lego, you need to have the official pieces. So if your printer is a little bit out of spec, you're not gonna have a very good clutch or grab whenever you put the piece together. That's that click you hear, that's oh so satisfying click when you put pieces together or that squeeze. A lot of times it's usually the squeeze when they go together. You can just kind of feel that just squish together and it is a good strong piece. So being able to print these makes it difficult. Now on an FDM one, uh, it, it's pretty not great. Uh, this is a tiny smidge undersized. I might try printing it on a different printer, but the Mark is pretty accurate for me at least. So um, when I go ahead and do that, they do come apart pretty easily. Not great. So let's cue in a printer that I haven't used in quite a while, and that's gonna be the Anycubic Photon. So this is one of my resin printers I don't use all the time. I mean, honestly, I haven't used it since I moved here, and I moved here in July, it's now January. So yeah, haven't used it yet because it's in my office, and I really don't want to have a lot of fumes from this, so I only print this at night. Once everybody's in bed, I can close my office door and print. So I have printed a few parts. Now let's get those off the build plate and let's take a look at what they look like. Okay, so once all that prep work is done, as you can see, there's there's a lot of prep when you're printing with resin. I mean, when you print FDM, you pop it off the plate and boom, you're done, you're good to go, you start. But printing with resin has a lot more things you need to do. So I printed this two different ways. Now, the one I showed in the video was where I had them both off of the plate. So the video I showed you guys was me printing them where they're off the plate, they're suspended on supports. And that doesn't work out great if you need a flat bottom. It works out okay. So two different ways. So printed this three different ways. I'll show you the two that you saw already. So the first way was it flat, so straight like this, suspended down. You get a pretty bad bottom to that. Let me show you. That's about as soon as I can get in there. You can see that is not flat at all. 
lot of lot of movement there on either direction. And again, this was printed down straight like this with support holding it there. Not great. So then I printed it at a 45 or 40 ish degree angle like this. Support was going here up and there was one piece of support touching it right on the edge here. Actually it was this way. So support was from here and one piece right there. Now this bottom is a lot more flat, but not completely flat. And I, we're gonna show a way I'm gonna get around that, but just kind of wanted to show what it looks like. Uh, bulging is at a minimum. You can see there's a little bit of a scoop up there. And that's just because of the way that it printed. It doesn't print perfect. Again, this is not the greatest printer out there, but I mean, it does print very high. Now, the clutch on these is pretty great. It holds really well. You get that squish the same as you would get with a Lego to Lego piece. Squish like that. But yeah, it works out great on these. Now the other two pieces that I'd printed prior were these ones and these were printed flat on the build plate. But you can see there's a problem. There is elephant foot quite a bit on there. And it's honestly, pretty hard to get a resin printer perfect. Now again, a lot of people are able to do it properly. I almost always get elephant foot when I print flat on the build plate on this printer. The Mars, it prints a little bit better, but it's hard to use on my shelf. But regardless, um, you get a nice, really, really flat bottom, perfectly flat bottom on this, but you do need to take care of that elephant foot, which means also that your dimensions are gonna be off by a little bit. How am I gonna go around getting uh, this fixed from the dimensions being off. I'm so glad you asked. Not 100% sure. So what I'm thinking right now is that I'm going to get some sandpaper. So probably like 120 grit. And with the ones with elephant foot, feet, elephant feet, elephant footing, I'm going to just sand those down on their side and try to get them nice and flush and see if I can get these two to match the same height. So that's the plan for those ones. Now for the other ones, that are rounded at the bottom makes it more difficult. The one that was completely suspended, I don't think I'm gonna use that one at all just because it is so rounded, really not usable part. But the one that I printed at an angle, that's not too bad. I am going to do a fairly nifty trick, at least I think it's nifty. So I'm going to get a standard two by four Lego brick. I'm going to put one in it like that. I'm gonna get the other one, and since there is no elephant footing, they should both go in together fairly easily. Like that, like that, there we go. So that is the two of them there, and you can see now that they're on a flat surface together, or they should be flat, these Lego parts should be pretty doggone flat, I can now just flip it over onto some sandpaper and sand it down like so until those are even. And then this is one piece of track because this spans across from it. So hopefully sanding that down should work. Now is for the test. I'm going to sand these down and see what I can do. Five minutes later. Check it. So these are the ones that were printed at the 45 degree angle. Now you notice they do have a gap in them uh, between the two of them which is not great. See how that is there? Now, does it really matter that much? No, because these are gonna be going like this, like they're not against each other, but like for like looks. And I was able to get the bottom pretty doggone flat. I probably could have sanded it a little bit more, but using the uh, square here, they are pretty flat, but it is a little bit hard to tell. So the bulge here on the side doesn't really help out very much. You can see that gap there. Um, so that wasn't, those weren't great. Uh, and then I have here the ones that had the elephant footing. And they, as you can see, line up near perfect because all I did was sand those on their side. There's very little take off. So I just kept going until I hit the side, kissed each side with that sandpaper a little bit, and then moved on. So, and these ones are perfectly square. Or I mean, doggone close to perfectly square a little bit of a gap on this one. Uh, so I probably could sand that down a little bit more, but overall, this is pretty good. And again, they're not going next to each other, so does it matter that much? Nah, but 
you know, hey. Now let's see how the clutch is on these. So I do have here a two by 10. And if I just put these in there like that, you can hear that click. It is a very, very positive click. I said there is a piece you can print to go between these, but I have a fair bit of one by tens and one and two by two by tens, two by eights camera. Please, there we go. See, there it is. And then I've got a bit of track. So if I go ahead and put this on where the track comes together, so I'm going to put this and uh, there we go. All right, so here on the table, there is not much movement on it when I have my, put my hands down on it. This, this table is not 100% flat, but like it's close. Um, but yeah, I mean, it feels pretty stable. It doesn't rock very much at all. If we take the, uh, the other ones that I sanded down to like partially flat. Again, these have a pretty good clutch when they catch into there. We put this on top and that has a fair bit of rocking to it. Not, not a ton. And again, like this is, I think this is step two, because obviously this is too big of an incline for a train to go up. I cannot do that. This is step two or step three, I think, honestly. There's like, the, 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 the fog is up to 20, uh, but I think realistically you only need to go up to like 10 and they, the, it's two uh, of these bricks. So if I was to put two bricks down, they are the same height as the printed part, but it's not a brick. You know, again, I do have quite a lot of bricks, but they're all not the right color. But these are at least gray, like I have gray resin here. So it kind of matches, even though we have three different colors we've got. And this is also, this is new dark grayish brown. This is old, just light gray. Then I have this resin, and this is some standard rigid resin from Nova 3D. So yeah, I've got two different options here on what to use. Uh, I will say, I think the clutch on these, because they're printed straight, is a little bit tighter than these ones. These do mush more. And again, if you put Lego together, it has that kind of like squeeze to it. So I put these two together here and they have that just, that, can, you kind of, can you hear that? I don't think my cam, I don't think my mic could pick it up. But you have that squish, that positive squish that goes together where these have that positive squish. So they definitely have, I think, a easier clutch to take on and off. I wouldn't do this all the time. Like once these are set up, this is also not to like not leave set up, but these ones are much, you know, more affirmative. I'm sure they will loosen up over time, which they already seem to be, but uh, yeah, that's that. So there's a little bit of 3D printing for Lego. Uh, I don't know when I'll actually get around to using these. I hope sometime soon. Uh, I'm still waiting for more track to come in and whatnot, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and start printing these in bulk on my resin printer. And I might hit them with like a clear coat on the side, maybe tape the top of them or get a sacrificial Lego piece and put them all in there, hit them with a little bit of clear coat on the outside just to seal the resin. Now these are um, cured as best as possible. I mean, I ran them in here for 12 minutes, which is way more than long enough, but two 12 minute cycles and it rotates. And each time I did it, I changed the orientation of it. But uh, yeah, I think it was a pretty cool little experiment. Uh, I'm glad I kind of got to mess with it a little bit and hopefully I'll be able to use it. And this might be useful to someone out there who has the 3D printer and has a Lego train and they want to actually uh, raise up and have some fun with it. Maybe have some crisscrossing track and things like that without a crisscross, but put it up on, on a high top, or if you're building a Lego city, something like that. So yeah, if you're curious, if you're interested in any of this stuff, I'll put links all down below for the different tools I'm using, resin, the, three, the resin 3D printer, the AnyCubic wash and uh, cure station. You don't need this, but it's kind of nice to have. I've done it other ways. I have other videos on that as well. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you want to have more content like this. I'm going to put a link down below to my Lego channel as well, which I hope to start real soon. Uh, this will be one of the first things that I probably talk about on that channel. So so if you are interested in just how I'm using it and less of like the technical aspects to it, then go and check that channel out. So thank you guys for tuning in. Y'all have a good day. Happy printing. I'll see you next time.